So those are some good looking Jordans. Welcome to art class. Thank you. Finish up this fighter plane here, and maybe a couple little things to the shoe, and then it's, it's ready to hang. Yeah, it's, it's like, when is something actually done? I feel like you can always add a little something. Yeah, I feel like the, the go-to phrase that I like to say from Napoleon Dynamite, break the wrist and walk away, because uh, <laughs> you really could just keep working on it, kind of like keep adding like little things, and, and before you know it, just like kind of overwork the piece. So it's pretty much coming in, finishing with the black lines, coming around the outside, a couple other little smaller details inside by adding a star. So yeah, so these, these paintings are going to be going into an art show, Austin Art Garage. I'm having a solo art show. So this does feel kind of like a big deal and just like questions of am I worthy? Is it, you know, people are going to show up? And so, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm, you are worthy. Well, and I appreciate we're excited that. Yeah, about no, it. Yeah, thank you. So what does the creative process look like? Because there's some seemingly 3D elements on this one, but I'm sure it looks a little different every time. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like been a more of a recent thing that I get excited about these kind of old palettes. So I'm always looking for, for people throwing them out. So I think there's just something really cool and gnarly about just the old, the old beat up wood. And then this part is actually an old kind of shed door that I found. I thought it was really cool, kind of like the gnarly is old, really? kind of like rust lines and, and just gives it a little bit more the texture. texture. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. draw everything in full before it goes up into its final form? I usually don't. Like I'll have kind of like a mock-up that I'll put in the kind of maybe like a Photoshop file. Mm -hmm. and so on the computer, I have an idea. So it's exciting for me to see it come to life for the first time on the actual wall or in the actual painting. Also, one of my favorites is this little guy here, your little friend. Yes, the next <laughs> big thing. That's, is he, what kind of so, animal is this? So that's a dinosaur. And I feel like this is one of your like first most recognizable pieces. Like if right. you see this around town, you know it's truth artist. Most people were requesting that in their art pieces and their murals. Cool. And, uh, can I so request all of these? Those are yours these to are own. Mine, yeah, you. you can keep those. Yes. So we got to see your mad skills in action. Yeah. You have one of those stories that you turned your passion into your full reality now. Right, it's right. It's been such a journey for you. Yeah, so I taught for 12 years. I was an art teacher at the elementary level, at the middle school level. Uh, my wife and I, we even taught overseas for about four years. And I was painting murals and doing little paintings for people on the side, but I never thought that I could make a full go of it, you know, be a full-time artist. For the past three years, I've been doing commission pieces, doing doing murals. I like to say, I'm living the dream. You are living the dream. Yeah. And we we're sitting in the dream. This is one of your most recently finished pieces. Yeah, yeah. How do you approach a project on this scale? So this one uh, was done for Run the Jewels. They, they came into town for Austin City Limits, and they, they also did kind of like a pop-up show here at the Volcom store on mm -hmm. 6th Street. And they said, yeah, can you do something, uh, you know, it is big, you know, it's, it's about 8 foot by 28 foot. And what I really liked on this project, they, they gave me a lot, a lot of freedom. So when you get that kind of freedom, what's your creative process look like? Where are you pulling that inspiration in? Things that would have made me excited as a kid, you know, and uh, I was really big into basketball, I was really big into skateboarding. Would, would 8th grade Mike, would he have liked this? Does this have street cred in right. the middle school mm -hmm. talent? Yeah. yeah. And you know, a signature part of each of your works is the truth. Right. How did that become a part of all of it? So we moved here seven years ago and I saw a lot of posters, I saw a lot of uh, different forms of graffiti and, and stencils and so I thought, man, I want to I start doing street art. So six years ago, my first stencil that I made was my neighbor's cat, then I did a Martin Luther King and I was like, what's the most powerful word I could think of? And because of my faith in God, I was like, man, I'm going to do truth. And so I just started putting truth around the city and it came to the point where I started putting truth on some of the pieces, and I had no intention on that becoming my street art name or my nickname, but people just started saying that, hey, truth, you know, you're gonna come paint with us, hey, truth. And so it kind of happened organically. And you ha there is this special culture for street art in Austin. How do you feel being a part of that community? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, I'm a part of an artist collective called Spray TX, and that formed probably about five years ago at the Graffiti Park. And it was just a bunch of friends that wanted to paint together. And one of them uh, named Heath said, we can make this a business. I think there's a lot of communities in different places in other cities where they have those creative communities, but maybe there's not that kind of business mind. Mm -hmm. And so it took, it took Heath's kind of business mind to say, hey, let's, let's find a way to make a living doing what we love. 
Where can we see your work over town? So like, yeah, the street art posters that I put up, some of those might last a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. But for the murals, the biggest one to date is on the side of Alamo Draft House Slaughter. So right as you're driving down Mopac, heading south, you can see we did a, a mural there for uh, Ninja Turtles movie when that was coming out. Nice. Um, we've done a piece across from the W in the parking lot there at Amley. Mm -hmm. It says Love Will Win. One of my favorites. And I got to be with you right yeah, after you finished right. that. Some yeah. of the finishing strokes there. Google Fiber Office, we have a, we have a mural there. There's a couple different tech companies that we've done murals for. It must be so cool to see them come to life like that. When you decided to take the sleep and go all in on this side of your life, were you scared? A bit, yeah. I think there was uh, definitely some comfort in knowing. So if I stopped teaching in June, I knew I still had a paycheck coming for July and August. Mm -hmm. But then it started picking up. So mm -hmm. it feels good. Sometimes it feels stressful knowing yeah. that, okay, we have these different deadlines we have to reach. Um, and you want to have something new, something fresh. So we feel very grateful that, that the city has been so supportive and that we are able to make a living doing what we love. Yeah, it's, I feel like that is also a testament to Austin, Texas and really fostering that creative spirit. How do you feel when you see people see your art? Do you ever like hide in the wings and just watch people's responses to some of your paintings? It could be good and bad, but for the most part it is it is fun just kind of see people, maybe they'll, they'll stop and take a picture of the street art and yeah. you know that, that's always good to see. I've also had time where people came up and were, were painting over, actually the Love Will Win piece. We're painting a new mural on top of the old one we had done. And this guy walked by and said, you know, about time they're covering that piece of crap, you know? So it's like, all right, yeah, man, I agree. And you, so get, you, you get all you of get, it. Yeah, you get both okay. ends. And when you speak to that painting over, you know, that's part of like street art culture is you have to be okay letting go of a piece. I feel like I wouldn't be able to let go. You put so much effort right. into this huge painting and then you are prepared for it to be painted over. Yeah. How do you let go of those pieces? I guess for the street art posters, those are a little easier because maybe that takes like two hours to paint on the paper and I paste those up. Gotcha, yeah. And then yeah. sometimes they get peeled off. Sometimes, you know, people tag on them. But I'd say like a piece like this took us about four days to do. Wow. And we knew it was just for the event. So it's just going to be here for about three weeks and then it goes away. So mm -hmm. those are a little harder because, you know, it's going to have a short, short lifespan. But I think that's just a part of street art culture in itself. You know, you create something, you hope to get a picture of it, but you want people to appreciate and enjoy it, but it is temporary, it's gonna be gone. Change is the only constant in life, so that can help you. Preach. Keep... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're yeah. living it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you.